Welcome, everyone. It's good to see a lot of people here. When we first saw the list of attendees for our session, there were only 10 people in that list, and we were like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, we are uh, like, I'm happy to be presenting here at Cube Day Japan. Uh, this is not only my first time you know, presenting internationally, but also it's been a privilege to talk on a topic which has been a significant focus for us at Expedia Group, which is transitioning from instance to IP-based NLB. So before we uh, move to technical aspects of this presentation, let me share a bit more about ourselves. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Isha. I'm a software development engineer at Expedia Group. I have been working in Expedia Group for more than three years now, uh, with total of around eight plus years of experience in this industry, working on Kubernetes cloud and uh, these technologies. And with Expedia, I'm mainly employed as a platform engineer where uh, my focus is basically on application development, deployment, supporting th that, and scaling capabilities. Over to Shreya. Hi, everyone. My name is Shreya Kansal. I'm working with CoForge as a DevOps engineer. I have a total of around five years of experience. And with Expedia Group, I'm working in their platform engineering tree. So this will be our plan for today. We'll discuss journey to zero downtime. Uh, we'll talk about how important it is to keep our systems running without any interruption. So uh, the goal is to make sure that uh, our systems and services in our company are always up 24-7. Then we'll discuss the case study, implementing NLB IP mode. We'll uh, talk about the root cause analysis, what were the problems and issues that has caused client-side timeouts in, across EG, and what was the solution design, how, we, you know, how those problems were fixed using the solution. And then the preparation for rollout, how uh, basically we prepared ourselves, how we got ready to deploy that solution, making sure everything is in place. And next, we uh, discuss about the phase rollout strategy. Uh, we'll talk about how we divided our solution rollout into multiple phases and then testing and making sure everything, every phase is well tested and well monitored. We have enough monitoring and observability for each of the phase of this uh, rollout. And then finally, the conclusion, we'll talk about uh, how working together and focusing on building a strong and resilient system led to our success. Then finally, if you have any question and answer, we'll be here till evening. Over to next slide. Uh, so yeah, um, you must be wondering, like, uh, why does this particular sta chain stand out? We, the, like, we do changes all the time uh, in our company, right? So implementing a change might seem easy, easy to us. But why does this change stand out for us at Expedia? So the answer is uh, significance lies in the magnitude of its impact. So the timeouts which uh, this solution was resolving was impacting any of like around 2100 services or applications which were deployed around, around 180 production clusters. So it could have positive as well as negative impact across CG. On a positive side, if this rollout was a success, it could have a huge positive uh, impact on across EG. And on the flip side, if it has if any of the issues occur in e any of the you know uh, phase of the solution rollout, then it could have incurred a huge significant loss for EG. So, uh, so there are several aspects when we talk about road to zero downtime, and all those aspects are divided into four uh, areas. And we, as a platform team, collaborated with reliability team to you know, make sure that we have, <clears throat> we have answers for each and every area of these uh, quadrants. So there are four quadrants, basically, which, uh, for example, we have solution engineering, we have resiliency, we have uh, operational excellence, and then in, at the last, we have observability. And in the solution engineering, we have different parameters, like compatibility. So how, uh, how is the new solution is compatible to the existing solution? For example, uh, we figured out that it is better to use AWS load balancer controller to spin up our NLBs. 
instead of terraforms because that is Kubernetes native and the second is it has fewer edge cases as compared to terraform modules. Uh, the second is ease, ease of maintenance. How easily can this uh, new solution be maintained to the fault tolerance or improve performance? Operational overhead. Uh, what is the like, uh, cost, change of cost if we, for the new solution? Will there, will there be any increase in the costing part? Protocol support. Uh, does this no, new solution will be supporting all of these protocols? Like we have most common uh, protocols in use are HTTP 1, HTTP 2, and gRPC. And the client connection management is entirely different for all these protocols. Will this uh, new solution in, is, like, has any side effects in any of these protocols? Coming to resiliency, uh, we have parameters like load distribution like how uh, this new solution is, is the new solution equally uh, distributing the load among targets or the cleanup strategy, how we are, what's the strategy to clean up? Uh, when we talk about the rollout plan, you'll, uh, you'll get to know about uh, the cleanup part later. Failure modes, do we have any failure modes and why are, why, what, like, what's the reason of that? Graceful termination, are there, are the, uh, like in-flight requests are handled gracefully with the new solution. Limit quotas, like, uh, like are uh, there any limits quotas getting breached with the, uh, this new solution? For example, we are migrating from in NLB instance to IP. So our Istio ingress pods will be attached to the NLB. And there will be like, uh, for the big cluster, there will be around more than 500 pods. Will that NLB limit get hit? Uh, with this new solution. So we have to figure out our, all these answers in the resiliency part. Coming to operational excellence, uh, we have parameters like automation. How can we automate this deployment? So if we do it manually, it can lead to human errors. Uh, progressive rollout. How can we roll out this solution progressively from development till the production environment. Interface coordination. How, how can we coordinate with the external teams to make sure that we have solutions, we have, we'll make sure that uh, is the new solution even uh, like uh, solving these client issues or delayed request issues for the clients. And the last one, most important, observability. We have to find out answers like, do we have enough monitoring and observability at place if we are talking about the solution rollout? Do we have TTX metric? Do we have time to know, time to recover, time to fix metrics for all of the failure modes detected in all these uh, quadrants? Next slide. So the whole activity uh, was divided into multiple phases uh, to ensure careful analysis and seamless deployment. First, uh, we did the root cause analysis. We found out what, is the, what was the exact issue for those uh, client-side timeouts and errors. And then we finally designed the solution. And then after that, we prepared ourselves for the rollout. We uh, figured out all the solutions for each failure mode in the solution, uh, rollout phase. And then finally, we rolled out the solution. Yeah, so coming to uh, root cause analysis. So uh, the issue came when we have multiple Jira tickets in our you know, platform namespace, and all these Jira tickets were uh, you know, divided into multiple categories. There were mainly three categories which uh, all these Jira tickets were divided. So one was the delayed request. So clients were sending requests to server, but their, their request was uh, getting on the server side at a later uh, several seconds after the client has originated. The second was successful server response. Even though the server is sending the successful response, but clients are uh, getting terminated. Their connections are getting terminated. And the third one is keep alive failure. The, uh, so the gRPC clients are having, like we're facing keep alive failures. So these were the issues which uh, we figured out where 
all of, you know, across EG, there were multiple uh, JIRA tickets across all these categories. And on further investigation, it was noted that, that these timers were not only specific to HTTP clients, but they were also linked to gRPC clients. So after uh, thorough analysis, the root cause was identified to the, uh, to the node churn, worker node churn, getting terminated abruptly. So I'll explain using diagram how uh, traffic flows across clusters in Expedia Group. So, so if an app, if you can, uh, you can assume this as an one AWS account, and this was a second AWS account. If an application has to talk to the second application in different AWS account, so uh, we have so all applications are uh, on the Istio mesh under the service mesh, and if one application talks to the other application, the Istio proxy on one account talks to the NLB, and then NLB talk to the node port service, which is linked to the Istio ingress gateway port on the destination account, and then Istio ingress gateway port knows how to you know, redirect that traffic to the application. So the issue was when this worker node get, gets terminated abruptly, the client connection between this NLB and the worker node is half closed, and so similar in the similar way, the connection between the worker node and the Istio ingress gateway port on the destination account is half closed. So that means the NLB on the inbound side and the Istio ingress gateway port on the destination side the traffic is unable to communicate because the connection is basically broken due to worker node getting terminated abruptly. So the next question which can come to your mind is why does this worker node uh, getting abrupt, uh, like getting terminated abruptly? So, uh, so how our clusters are set up in Expedia Group is basically the Istio Ingress Gateway ports are deployed on the worker nodes, which are managed by Auto Scaling Group, and those Auto Scaling Group is managed like that is that scales in and out based on an event from cluster Auto Scaler, and when a cluster Auto Scaler scale in like there's a scale in event from cluster Auto Scaler. So what Autoscaler does is it will do these three, uh, three things. One is it will first code on the node for all the existing ports. It will then drain the node. And then it will finally uh, send the signal to Autoscaling Group to terminate that node. But in order to you know, uh, terminate the in-flight request gracefully, the Autoscaling Group should deregister that target from NLB also. But this is now not the way how clusters were set up in Expedia. And uh, so basically, autoscaling group does not deregister that target from NLB. So uh, there's no proper communication bet between autoscaling group and NLB, you can say. And that is uh, the case uh, due to this abrupt termination of worker nodes. The clients were facing timeouts issue, and there were uh, delayed server responses. There were various keep alive failures from client side. Yeah, so from uh, like before NLB migra before NLB IP migration, uh, there was an abrupt abrupt termination of worker node, and there was a uh, loss of loss of client connection. And after NLB IP migration uh, mode there was a graceful connection between NLB and Istio Ingress Gateway port, and there were no lost of request. Handing over to Shreya for uh, discussing the solution design and finally the, how we rolled out the solution. Thank you, Isha. So uh, migrating NLB from instance mode to IP mode, uh, 
was a big deal for us considering the magnitude of impact that it had on EG's ecosystem and the microservices that we are running. Therefore, after careful analysis, the following aspects were considered before we designed the whole solution so that it is foolproof and the migration is seamless. So first one is zero downtime rollout. As the name suggests, we wanted to have a seamless migration where we have a no impact on the microservices that are running. Second is impact on service mesh. So we are not only utilizing STO for its uh, you know, ingress gateway capabilities, but we're also facilitating it as a service mesh. So we wanted to ensure that we are not hampering any of its mesh capabilities while deploying this change. Third was support for multiple protocols in use. So the microservices that are deployed on our platform are using multiple uh, protocols for their communication, like HTTP 1, HTTP 2, gRPC. So we wanted to make sure that uh, you know, post the solution rollout, all of the protocols keep working like they were before the uh, solution rollout so that the communication stays intact between the microservices. And fourth was low distribution among the targets. So again, we wanted to ensure that all the traffic that we're getting on our load balancer gets equally distributed among all the ingress gateway pods and not just a few pods. So for rollout preparation, as key concerns, we wanted to take note of a few points before the uh, solution rollout. First was a limit blast radius. Like we wanted to uh, ensure that in case uh, any issue occurs, how can we prevent you know, bringing the whole uh, environment or bring the whole ecosystem down? Second was uh, we wanted to have monitoring in place for all the components that were involved in the rollout process. Third was we wanted to have a foolproof rollback plan that in case any issue co uh, occurs, we're able to roll it back instantly, and the rollback is pretty much efficient so that we don't, incur, uh, 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 we don't face any issues. And fourth was, uh, we wanted to have a clear criteria that in case any issue occurs, how do we decide that we want to go ahead with the migration or if it is a mission abort for us? Uh, so finally, moving on to the most awaited slide of the presentation, uh, that is the high-level rollout overview. What were the steps we followed to roll out the solution? So for step one, we uh, injected pod readiness gate for our ingress gateway pods. Now what is pod readiness gate? So AWS Load Balancer Controller uh, supports pod readiness gate that indicates that the pod is registered to the load balancer as a target and is healthy to receive the uh, traffic. And second is we provisioned the, uh, a temporary uh, NLB, which was already in IP mode. So these two things we did as step one. For step two, we migrated all our traffic from our old NLB, which is running in instance mode, to this temporary NLB, which is running in IP mode. With the help of a Kai Werner rule, we updated the external DNS annotation of the microservices uh, uh, virtual service. and. Uh, through that, we were able to migrate the traffic to this newly created NLB in IP mode. For step three, uh, we modified the existing, our old NLB from instance mode to IP mode. And then finally, in step four, we migrated all the traffic again from the temporary NLB in IP mode to this uh, old NLB, which is now in IP mode. Again, with the help of a Kai Werner rule, we updated the external DNS annotation in the virtual service. So all of these steps were done in a phased manner. So uh, at Expedia Group, we have three PCI categories. We can name them for now as PCI category one, two, and three. So while rolling out in test environment, we did test environment PCI category one. Then we took a soaking period for two days, and we monitored metrics and stats during that time. If uh, you know there is any issue that we are facing due to the rollout. Then after two days, we rolled it out in test environment, PCI category two. Then again, a second period of two days. And then finally, we rolled it out in test environment, PCI category three. Then after a week's uh, soaking period, we rolled out in similar fashion to the production environment. Uh, now uh, for the rollout approach. So uh, before rolling out in production, we wanted to be very confident about the change. So uh, we did multiple uh, 
test runs in our test environment, and we call them pilot run, and we try to simulate the exact conditions we would have in production in the test environment. So with each pilot run, we have our different set of you know learning and takeaway, and by uh, you know carefully catering to each and every issue that we encountered in the pilot run, we were able to deploy it to production pretty seamlessly. So in uh, Alpha Violet Run, we came across an NLB target limit that AWS has, which was causing a scalability issue, and we uh, fixed that. In Beta Violet Run, we found a few loopholes in our existing monitoring infrastructure, and then we worked upon it. And in Gamma Pilot Run, we saw there were some issues in the DNS uh, updates. So uh, on uh, digging a little deep, we found out that there was a client-level uh, caching due to which there was this uh, DNS update failure. And then we uh, you know, got a list of applications that were facing the issue. And we asked them to uh, reduce the TTL for DNS caching. Uh, so moving on to testimonials. As you can see from the graphs above, so the first graph shows the uh, timeouts of an application that almost subsided to zero post the rollout. And the second graph uh, shows us for a set of application, the 5x6 errors, and that also subsided to zeros. So the testimonials look uh, pretty impressive from the graphs above. So with the help of uh, these graphs and a few more graphs like these, we were able to conclude that the whole uh, production rollout was a pretty much successful because of the uh, subsequent decrease in errors and 5x6 timeouts. Uh, moving on to the last slide of the presentation, that is conclusion. So initially, when we started discussing the uh, solution, we thought that the rollout would be pretty st uh, straightforward. But uh, the uh, complexities are have been explained in detail in the presentation. But uh, with a reliability first mindset and a collaborative approach, uh, achieving seamless zero down downtime production rollouts is not only feasible, but systematic. So yeah, that was it for rolling out the solution. And uh, me and Isha will be around till evening. So if you have any doubts uh, regarding the uh, rollout or the presentation, you can feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you.